I wanted to show you guys progress I've been making on these smaller so sand metal water batteries. It's a straw, it's very small, and it's producing about the same amount of power as my bigger designs. And for bigger designs, I was using cups like this size and getting about the same amount of power. So that's drastically smaller and gives the same amount of power. So <laughs> I just want to give you guys an update. Uh, best way I've found to keep these cells charged and get them out of power in them is just to short them out like they are right now. Just like that. And let's sh uh, sit there, short it out for at least a day. That just helps mature the cell. But we're just going to hook it up to the meter right here. And again, you can use aluminum or graphite if you choose. Yeah, it'll go up in voltage until it equals out, then it'll start going down because the meter will supply a load to it. And that's in the millivolt range. So, yep. And it's a very simple design, really. It's a straw, two pieces of loom strips. I don't know if you can get a good close look at that. Two loom strips on each side, aluminum, aluminum, same metal, encased into a plastic straw. And that plastic straw has distilled water in it. You want to make sure this plastic straw is completely full of water. It's distilled water it works best. You can use tap water, but it doesn't. The minerals in tap water really don't do good with aluminum. But you can use uh, tap water with graphite pencil lead, and the graphite will hold up better. But it's important that it's completely full of water and it's airtight, so no air can get in and no water can evaporate out. And that's important. And that's what gives these cells where they are. And make sure when you hook it up the first time you do it, you won't get much power at all. So you want to short it out for at least a day, like I have done here. And that's really it. It's a very simple design. Two of the same metals. Uh, if this shouldn't be happening. If you search the internet, you shouldn't be getting any voltage from uh, the same metals. as usually from distiller metals. Um, but yeah, that's really uh, really amazing. Uh, I don't know what causes it to be positive and negative. That's still a mystery to me. It's still a mystery to me that it's even getting voltage period. That's the biggest mystery of all. But what I found interesting when I was working with the bigger cup cells like this, get perspective where I, where I came from, I would have a big plate and then I have a little tiny plate. And this cell right here, these two plates are actually the same size. Actually, I cut a strip uh, and I broke the strip in half and I put them in there. So they're pretty much the same size. Uh, so I used to decide that, uh, well, I used to think that I decided the positive and negative was the size of the plates. I always thought the positive plate was always the bigger plate and the negative plate was always the negative plate. Well, that's kind of odd because now it's usually I find it backwards most times. And the only thing I can think of is that when I first started making these bigger cup cells was that I was making them uh, entering winter. Um, now it's coming spring and now the polarity has kind of changed. I, I kind of find that weird. That might have been a mistake on my part, but I don't know. I really, uh, It's still a mystery what causes the voltage and what causes the polarity. So it's hooking up to a meter will determine the polarity and also determine the voltage of each cell. Each cell produces its uh, own power differently. I have some cells that generate only 50 millivolts and I got some cells like this one are, are good producers that produce over 200 millivolts. So I really don't understand what's causing the power in the first place. But one important thing to note and this is probably, the, probably one of the most important things. Uh, one of the golden rules about making these cells is that each plate, this plate and that plate in there, have to be perfectly flat and smooth. Kind of like this guy right here. That's what it will look like inside. It's a thin piece of aluminum foil, perfectly flat. Don't fold them. 
and don't have any dents or dings or pivots in it that will affect your power. You just want a perfectly smooth, perfectly perfect cell plate. And fill it with distilled water. And the well, problem you will have with uh, making these is that if you enclose one end of the cup or straw, it doesn't want to take any water. So what I had to do is cut this little, you see glue right in the middle? I had to cut a little notch in the middle. Then when I was underwater, I had to flatten it as best as I can. Then open it back up and it will take in water. And then when you take it out of the water, I just put glue right there to seal it off. So it's it's kind of a painstaking process, but it's amazing that it works in the first place. That's pretty amazing. It shouldn't be happening, but it is. 